When we left the conference, we had decided on a grade 8 unsolved problem. It was going to be William Polson's beautiful prime number catacombs. This gives children experience with both prime numbers and exponents. If you haven't already experienced it, click on the center of your screen to go to a video about it right now. However, we had put the Heilbronn triangle problem in grade 6, and it really belongs in grade 8. Here's how it works. So you're going to put seven points inside this square. You want to make the smallest triangle as big as possible. We've done pretty well here. To make the problem even more appropriate for grade 8, we're going to put it on a lattice. So here, we're trying to find the smallest triangle, and we're trying to make that as big as possible. So this looks pretty good. It looks like we've got two. And can we do better by, maybe we could reposition them like this. Does this work? Or maybe like this. Maybe this is going to be better. Oh no, it's worse. So it's a tough problem, and you can get your students to uh, play with Pick's Theorem and derive Pick's Theorem with Algebra. I'm going to have a clickable video on here later to, to do just that. But at the moment, trust me, it, it's a great problem. Ariadne's string is a great problem to give your students practice with Pythagoras. Theseus starts in the upper left. He has to wind his way through this colonnade, taking increasingly large steps with each move and end up at the minotaur in the bottom left. Let's see how it might work. Here, Theseus has taken a few steps, not enough, however, and so whenever he reaches the minotaur, the minotaur gores him and Theseus is killed. <sighs> Can we do better? Let's see. Well, this is even worse. Theseus finds himself unable to even reach the minotaur because in order to get there, his last step would actually be smaller than the previous step. Remember, each step has to be larger than the previous step. Can we do any better? Well, let's try. Oh, this very symmetric solution, or this symmetric solution. Surely these are optimal. Here we have eight steps getting to the Minotaur. Sadly, this is not optimal. So Theseus does get to the Minotaur, kills him, is Gordon the process, they both die. Pretty good result, but maybe you can do better. Let's see. So here is the optimal solution. That is nine steps. Very difficult to find, but fun to find. And of course, you can just increase the number of columns in your grid. So try this. So thanks very much to uh, Charles Greathouse for finding this optimal solution. Of less interest to the mathematicians are problems like this. So these are happy numbers if they go to 1. So 49 it goes to 4 squared plus 9 squared, that's 97. 97 goes to 9 squared plus 7 squared, that's 130. 130 goes to 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 0 squared, that's 10. And you have to find out what fraction of numbers end up going to 1. Those are happy numbers. The reason that mathematicians don't like problems like this is because they are rooted in the base 10 number system, and mathematicians generally would like something more general. I didn't put Gauss's circle point problem into the conference booklet, but over the last few weeks I've been thinking about it, and I think there's a nice way to put it into the curriculum. The question is, given a circle of a certain radius, how many squares does it contain, given that that circle has its center on a lattice point? So here the answer is 12. Here the answer is 16. But what happens if we relax the criteria that requires that that circle center is right on a lattice point? Well then we're dealing with polyominoes. Is it possible to find a circle that will cover the right pentomino without covering any other squares? Is it possible to find a circle that will fit within the left pentomino and touch all of the squares part of that pentomino? The answer in both cases is yes. Here are two such circles. Of course, there's many such circles. And finding the extreme sizes of those circles gives a lot of opportunity for rich algebra and geometry. 
Not all polyominoes have such circles. Here are two that do not. 